Hello and welcome back to the Be Unbound podcast. I am your host, David Rethemeyer, and I am joined by my co-host, Abraham Chen. This is part number two of episode 64 of Unbound Pursuits, where we talk with students who are pursuing specific career fields. So if you are joining us for the first time and you have not listened to part one of this conversation, I would highly encourage you to do that. But if you have already listened to it, then uh, we are very excited to have you guys listen in on the second part. So Abe, tell us a little bit about what we can look forward to. As you said, David, this is part two. For those of you coming from part one, welcome back. We uh, just talked about a lot of the inspiration for a lot of our writers in community um, going into just where we write and where we get inspiration. But today in this episode, we really dive into more of the technical details, um, dealing with struggles that writers face, how to overcome writer's block, how to overcome some of the loneliness that comes with writing. Uh, this was a very interesting episode for writers, but also for creatives. So um, it was a good conversation. I can't wait to share this with you guys. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. So without further ado, please enjoy part two of this episode. I wanted to spend a few minutes kind of going into the the more technical side of writing. And, and we have a lot of listeners, both Unbound and those who are not Unbound yet, who are interested in writing, are writers as well. And uh, I'm sure there are a lot of struggles that we all share. Um, so about this, I, I think... Let me just ask the question, what are some of the struggles that you feel like are not talked about as much within writing circles or just in general? Because there's always the really fun parts, right? Being creative to tell your story and explore new worlds and new concepts. But there's, as you guys mentioned, definitely the struggles. So what was something that um, I guess in some ways were, were surprises, were new, were struggles that we're like, huh, this should definitely be addressed more or whatnot. Um, really, Joshua, how about we start with you guys again? Okay. Um, so the main struggle that came to my mind when you asked this question was the false idea that a first draft has to be perfect. Um, that's one thing that I, I struggled with for nearly nine years before I was finally able to turn off the editor and just write the first draft. And I couldn't reread anything because I'm so picky. It's not even funny. So I couldn't reread any of the scenes. I just put my head down, basically put a piece of paper above the top of my screen, and I just wrote the story to get it done. And once I did that, and I took that mindset that the first draft does not have to be perfect, I wrote the whole book in like two months, after what had taken me nearly nine years of fighting this idea that the first draft had to be perfect, and that I would go back and rewrite the scene and rewrite the scene. And so it was just a constant struggle. And so that's kind of the approach I'm taking with writing the sequel because it worked on the first one. And so I'm writing, my editor is off. Um, there will be no red squiggle lines yet at all. And so, and I don't reread anything. I just sit there and I write until it's done. And then I go back and edit. And so that's the biggest struggle that I do wish more writers would talk about and maybe provide help for is that your first draft is a first draft and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what the editing process is for. And so if you can just get the words onto the paper and just write, then you can go back and edit it later and make it perfect. Yeah, that's a really good point. Hmm. Josh, any thoughts? I would honestly say the biggest thing that I could give to some people is just don't quit on yourself. Don't quit on the story that you are passionate about. Because I would, a lot of the things that my wife had to deal with is that she had written this book for so long. She, as we got married, that she was talking to me about this and everything. She was about ready to give up on it. And I was reading through it. I was like, this is really, really good. And I, I don't want you to quit on it. I want you to do it. So, and I was there supporting her. And some people, I, I think sometimes it's like people just need that support. They need to know it's like, hey, this is a good idea. People want to know if they're writing, if what they're writing is good. That's the reason people write stuff. They want people to enjoy it. They want people to read their book and have a smile on their face, right? So biggest thing I can say is just don't 
Wait on yourself. You, the minute you quit on yourself is the minute that book will not get finished. So don't quit on yourself. Believe in yourself. And if you have to, and if you want to, get somebody that you know and you trust. Get them over here. Freaking. <laughs> brain me up. I apologize. <laughs> get them over here. Or her. Talk about it. Show them the book. And actually ask them for help. And I guarantee you, they probably will. And it might have a perspective on it that you may not have thought about before. And in turn, it might help you get the book finished. There you go. Yeah. very Again, very much relate to that. And, um, well, Laura, so since you write both prose and poetry, um, what has that process been like? Um, especially with people who are also writing poetry. What, what has that process been like for you? Any advice? Or what's been more difficult for you? Yeah, so <laughs> this is something I will say, uh, I think it's talked about a lot, but I never realized it because it was never something that I struggled with or like I didn't realize I was struggling with it. And it's the concept of waiting for the muse. And, you know, you read the quotes of like, just sit down and write and force the muse to come out and play, you know, like. And I never really understood that until I started this exercise called the wiggle your pencil exercise. And basically what you do is you sit down and you write. And the goal is to not stop writing. Like it doesn't matter what you write. It doesn't matter if it's bad, if it's good, if it's your story, if it's not your story, if it's randomness, like just write and don't stop writing. And it's this element that I never really realized before, which was forcing the muse to come out and play. And it's this idea of inner dialogue and like in our thoughts. And a lot of times it's like, we think about a lot of different things. We have a lot of different ideas in our head, but at least for me, it is, it's not super common to have like a string of consciousness of just like words in my head. But when I sit down and I write and I just spend 15, 20 minutes of just writing, writing, whatever I think all of a sudden I'm getting these, these phrases, these lines, these like feelings that are all of a sudden becoming words in my head. Whereas before it's like, Oh, it's just this feeling that I'm dealing with. And especially with like, with poetry, with prose, it's like when you sit down and you start to write and you get that inner dialogue going, you're going to start experiencing things in your life and you're going to start creating words for those in your mind. And I would say it's like, that's a big one. (laughs) Um, and the other thing is like, write it down when you get those ideas, when you get those thoughts, when you get those phrases, like, I don't care what you're doing, you stop what you're doing and you write it down because you will forget. And if it's a really, really good idea, you might remember it again later, but it's not going to be the same. It's going to be just a memory of that initial thought. Um, so yeah, forcing the muse to come out and play and writing the ideas down immediately when you start to get them. Can I also just say on a really technical note of we have we have smartphones now. I'm so glad that I can just pull up a Google Doc and write something down. And way back when I was like, I guess middle school, I had one of those like little notebooks and um, it's somewhere. I think hopefully it's not lost, but just uh, all the randomest ideas. And yeah, I think it's super cool that as we talk about making sure we put down ideas, it is a blessing that we do have the technology of, oh, hey, you know, you can just create a voice memo or write something down on our phone. And yeah, it's very helpful. But yeah, Jules, Valerie, whoever wants to go first, what has been, yeah, struggles that you feel like should be talked about more with writing? <laughs> uh, I think there, there's a couple that spring to mind. Uh, one of them is being articulate on paper, but not verbally, if that makes sense. Like it's really difficult when I know I'm I'm good at communication in written form, but I cannot communicate to you with my voice, like it, without you know really thinking about it and practicing hard. Which may be obvious listening to me talk in here. I don't know, but that's something that's difficult is feeling like I I do have these good thoughts, these good communications, but they do not come out my mouth the way they're written. So that's hard. Uh, Another one is, and I don't know if everybody else has experienced this, but there is a loneliness to writing. And uh, I I see the quotes on Pinterest and stuff where they're like, to write is to be alone. And a little part of me dies inside because I'm an extrovert. But it is somewhat true. And I don't think people talk about it as something that can be solved. 
Um, it's just like, oh, if you're going to write, you're going to be alone. And I, I don't want to accept that. And, and I know how it feels. I remember one time I was talking to my little sister, bless her heart. She's not a reader. She's not a writer, like none of it. And so I just like for an hour or an hour and a half, just like went on this long drawn out explanation of a book that I was thinking about. And at the end of it, she looks at me and she goes, I didn't understand anything you said. And I don't care. And I just remember being like, okay, like, am I crazy? Like, you know, it kind of leaves you feeling like, okay, so you don't understand me. And I, I have experienced a place where I was understood. It was a writing group when I was in ministry. Abe was actually part of it, but I have never experienced that since. And I think that's a challenge for writers, especially extroverted writers, like maybe introverted writers don't, don't care, but <laughs> I process verbally, even if it's inarticulate. So it's hard to be a lonely writer. Definitely. Yeah. Valerie, any thoughts? Well, mine kind of correlates to Julia. And I would say that I completely agree with Julia and how it can feel really isolating to be a writer because you do have to be alone to get it done. Um, otherwise it doesn't happen. Uh, but one thing I've noticed in the last like year or so that's really helped since, yeah, same thing. I used to be in a writer's group when I was in high school, not anymore, but bookstagram has been, and I think really could attest to this too, has been really helpful in feeling like, I mean, it's online, but there's a certain sense of like, if I post something and all these readers and writers are like, that's awesome or sounds great. There's this feeling of like, oh, like they're legitimizing what I'm saying. They understand. They also love reading. Um, so even if we're not all in the same state, kind of like what we're doing right now, like we are all encouraging and supporting each other. And that makes it feel less lonely, even though like we are kind of alone in order to do what we need to do. But um I think the biggest thing for me in terms of struggles would be, and this like kind of goes together, but imposter syndrome and writer's block. And I think the way people talk about writer's block is like, oh, when the muse is gone or when the creative juices aren't flowing. But the best way I've heard it described, at least in terms of how I relate to writer's block, is Trenton Lee Stewart, who wrote The Mysterious Benedict Society. I got to get my book signed by him in Raleigh at one point. And he's um, talked about his books and his struggles too. And he mentioned the writer's block at the end of the day is when you don't believe in yourself anymore and you don't believe in your work. And I was just like, oh, oh my gosh. So that's, I think, and you know, it was helpful, even though like that's super hard and true, it was helpful for him to describe it that way. Because usually when I experience writer's block, I would just think, oh, I'm not feeling creative right now. When really, it, whenever that happens, whether it's for a month or six months or a year, it's because I stopped believing in myself. And I wouldn't, feel like the writer's block doesn't go away until I believed in myself again because people like read these big books like the book thief or like Narnia and they're so amazing and people don't realize that like the writers behind those amazing books don't feel like it's worth anything and you know and and so it's a going back to what Julia said like it's a lonely struggle to write something and just have no idea whether it's any good or not. And of course, it's all subjective. Some people are going to absolutely love it. Some people are not going to care for it. And that doesn't determine its value. Um, so yeah, that th those have been my struggles. And just the ways I've tried to work through them is surrounding myself with people who do support me and knowing that like my niche is not everyone's niche. So not everybody has to love it. But as long as some people think it's halfway decent, then it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, that is such a real struggle for so many creatives and especially writers because um, it is a long form type of art and, and you put a lot into it and, and crafting a story is very difficult. So huge respect and very much relate to that. Kind of related to that question would be all of us uh, have been or around Unbound in some capacity. And I am wondering just whether it's with doing school or some of you guys having finished school, congratulations, but just being in and around Unbound, has that affected or uh, influenced the way you've written or has that uh, made things more difficult? Because again, being in Unbound, a lot of us are young professionals and we work and do school at the same time and balancing life and school and writing is very difficult. So what has that side of life been like? And what have been some ways you guys have either faced that, overcame, overcome struggles or whatnot? Um, let's see. Jules, how about we start with you first and we'll go down the line. 
I, I don't know that the Unbound community has particularly changed how I write, but I think one of the things that has been really maybe more than just writing changing, like life changing was the Signature Leadership Series, where uh, I've spent much of my life feeling like I love writing so much, like it it's almost an obsession. Maybe that's a sin. Maybe I love it more than God, you know, kind of like a weird should I be dabbling in this? Like, is this a good thing? Kind of a situation. I don't know if anybody on earth relates to that, but there was even a time where I walked into my mom's room and I was like, I'm going to delete this book because I think I love it more than Jesus. And she was like, do not do that. And I'm so grateful she didn't let me do that. But um, doing, I think it was L1, where they walk you through uh, your design. Like, what are the things you've been proud of over your life? And of course, several of those things that came up were the stories I'd written And it was really freeing to be like, God made me to do this. I have to do this. Like I'm supposed to do this. And if I don't do this, I am telling God no to my design. Like what even, why I would never want to do that. And ever since then, I have not had a doubt about whether or not I could spend my life doing this. Now, I don't know if God's going to have me make it a full-time career or if I'll dab. I don't know what he wants long-term, but I know he wants me to write. And I have Unbound to thank for introducing me to that series, which changed my life for sure. That That's awesome. And it, it's so cool to just hear. Um, I've gone through the leadership courses. And um, if you're an Unbound student listening and you have not, you should definitely look into those. Uh, it's really cool to see how the Lord's used the leadership courses to change people's perspective in so many different ways. And I have not uh, heard about this writing part of things with you, Julia. So that's really, really cool. Uh, Valerie, how about for you? Um, I think that in many ways, especially like coming to Apex and other um, Unbound events, Going in which like going back to the whole lonely thing can feel like, oh, you're I'm the only artist or I'm the only writer or whatever. And then you go into Unbound where like everyone was homeschooled and read Narnia and all that growing up. And you're like, oh, no, I'm one of many writers. I'm one of many creatives. And which is it's it's comforting in that, like one, there's a built in support system. But two, it makes it feel less. I guess there's less pressure because it's like, oh, well, we're all writing. We're all trying to figure it out. So it's not like you know, my book is one of many. So uh, that was really interesting. I wasn't necessarily, I should have been, because again, we were all homeschooled. But um, I was surprised about that when I first like went to Apex and all of that and just meeting so many people who also love reading and also love writing and all of that sort of stuff. So um, I don't know that Unbound has necessarily changed my writing. I didn't take the leadership courses, which everyone has told me was a big mistake, but um, I did do Navigate um, at the beginning. And so like that kind of, you know, is in a much more smaller package, kind of um, dabbled in that same concept of, well, what are we created to do? And like, what do you think are your talents? And so how are you going to use that either with your degree or like on the side or whatever? So I think that made me feel as I was transitioning from like being a teenager to being an adult made me feel like it's okay for me to pursue writing, even though I'm not a kid anymore. Like it doesn't have to continue to just be this side hobby. I can, or like, or it can't, it can continue to be a hobby or I can continue to pursue it maybe more seriously. Because if I, like what Julia's saying, if I was created with this talent of writing, then it's okay to pursue that, which sounds silly to say out loud, but like, you really do think like, oh, well, if it's, if it's an art, there are more serious things I could be doing when really like that is my serious thing. So that's such a great point. And I mean, the, the whole, is it a stigma or, or why not? I'm so glad that you brought that up because there is definitely something around being an artist and yeah, I mean, is that really sustainable? And um, it's really interesting where that's also been brought up a little bit more since we're recording this in 2021 and it's post 2020 and everything that happened last year. And a lot of people have been, you know, there's been a debate of like, how important are they? Like essential is art essential, essential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all that. And it's, yeah, it's, I think so uh, cool and, and interesting to come back and, and see how, yeah, stories are important and uh, the world is built on stories. That's what I personally believe. Um, And yeah, just seeing how stories have influenced, well, as we've talked about today, 
is so, so important. And so, yeah, that's a really cool perspective to have. Um, Rayleigh, Joshua, what about you guys? Um, so Joshua was not a part of Unbound. He's just why kind you of, gotta, why you gotta do that? He's married into Unbound family. <laughs> um, but I was a part of Unbound. Married into the Unbound family. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> Turned um, out of the bus like that. <laughs> but, uh, Unbound has definitely, uh, affected me more on the technical side of writing in that it really helped me learn how to create reasonable deadlines and how to take my deadlines seriously. And that's something that I definitely learned through doing the Unbound program and doing online college is setting, you know, a deadline and then learning what I needed to do to make that deadline happen. And so I carried a lot of those same things that I learned through Unbound. I carried it over into my writing and I've applied those same things. And so it's Unbound definitely made a huge difference um, on the technical side of things for me. That's really cool. Yeah. Laura, any thoughts? Yeah. So I will say this, and I think you mentioned this at the beginning, Abe, of like, Um, I think I wrote a lot more before I joined Unbound because I got significantly busier (laughs) after I joined, um, especially in deciding to go back to school. Um, But I remember, I think a big impact on me was like when I went to Apex the first time and like getting a biblical perspective of things like success and goals and um, pursuits things like that, where it's like, when you get advice on that stuff, it's almost always from like a worldly perspective, like self-help and all that stuff. And it's like, okay, how can I put all of these things that I want to pursue and I want to work toward and put them into a biblical perspective? And that was really beautiful to um, get to like rework my thinking on that. Um, Julia, I really related to what you were saying on like writing being an idol. Like there have been seasons like six months where I'm just like, I need to quit this because like this is too much of a passion kind of thing. And my sister actually said something really neat to me. She was like, you know, I have a husband and a child and they could easily become my idol, but God would not ask me to walk away from them. And that really stood out to me of like, yeah, we are like God gives us talents for a specific reason. And I think being a part of the Unbound community and being around so many different creatives who are using their creative talents for God's glory, it's like, oh, okay, I can do this too. Um, So it's been really inspiring and um, motivating. And I think one of the biggest impacts too for me has just been the idea of like thinking outside the box. (laughs) Um, That's kind of the whole idea of Unbound, right? Um, thinking outside the box, living outside the box, um, and being a creative, that's just like kind of what you have to do. Um, there, I have had countless people say like, okay, yeah, but like, what's going to be your real job? (laughs) Um, or what do you really want to do? And I'm like, well, I want to write books, you know? (laughs) Um, so yeah, it's been really neat to be around people who have big dreams and who fight for their big dreams. And it's like, okay, I'm not being unrealistic. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty neat. Totally. And yes, um, it, it's so cool to see how many people relate to the struggle of of passion because I found being in Unbound, especially being around Unbounders, one of the things that I absolutely love that is common is just the passion to think outside the box, like you said, Laura, and to do things well, do things differently. And there is that struggle very much where it's like, uh, you know, it might be too passionate. <laughs> Everyone around me is not exactly encouraging, right? Sometimes to, and I'm so grateful for, like we said, our family members, those around us who are willing to kind of come alongside and say, keep going. And on top of that, hey, the Unbound community just just also meet other passionate people who might say, hey, like I'm passionate about my thing, you're passionate about your thing. I might not completely understand what you're doing, but keep going, you know. And I've I can't say how many times I've had that happen at Unbound events. It's super cool. Um, <laughs> but going from there down again to a more practical level, um, what have been some tools, just practical tools that have helped you? with writing. So again, this is this would be for our listeners who are either writing or going into writing. Um, 
any, whether it's software or practical things that you found or tea. Okay, that's something super practical for me, I know, <laughs> that has helped with uh, just creating a good writing space or writing better and things like that. Uh, Laura, let's go over with you and then we'll go up. I feel like this one is going to get mentioned a lot, but um, Pinterest. Uh, be careful with this one, guys. It is a black hole. <laughs> um, I think I used it. I think when I first started using Pinterest for writing inspiration, it was a lot of like, oh, I'm getting inspired by the pictures and like, and the pretty quotes that are like, oh, maybe my character said this. And, you know, you start making vision boards and collages and like all these little fun things. And it is fun and very distracting. Um, so I think definitely like learning boundaries <laughs> for Pinterest is great. Um, deleting it from my phone for a while. That's also been great. Um, it's kind of like intermittent fasting, you know, occasionally it's like, yeah, we just need to learn for a little bit that I can live without this and then we'll bring it back. I think the biggest part of um, Pinterest that has been very just instrumental in my life has been the articles. Um, you know, people write about how to write, people write about being writers, people, you know, they have all the blog posts, all the tips, all the things. And I am really bad at reading anything that's nonfiction. So sitting down to read a book about writing is so stinking hard. Uh, I think I've owned On Writing by Stephen King for like five years. And I still have not read it. Um, but if I hop onto Pinterest and I'm like, tips for world building, tips for outlining, tips for this, tips for that. And you just get just a wealth of information on how to write and not just like the fun, inspirational things, but like actual tools. And I think being an Unbound student where a big part of our goal is to, um, be good learners. It's like, we, like, you don't necessarily have to take a class on writing. You can go out and you can teach yourself. Um, so that's been a huge, just influence in my life of like learning how to be a better writer, learning how to tell better stories, craft better characters, actually get my stuff written. Um, that's been a fantastic tool. And I'm so sorry if I stole that from <laughs> you other lovely writers who probably all use Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest is great, but yes, do be careful. Um, such a thing. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Jules, what do you think? Pinterest all the way. Um, but I think on a software level, something that changed the game for me is a, a writing software called Scrivener. And oh, yay. Other people know what I'm talking about. It's amazing. Like, um, you can view each scene individually. You can view them all together, depending on like, if I'm trying to read through it, I can put them all, I can just click a button and they're all put together. I read straight through. If I need to work on one scene, I click that one scene and that's all I see. Um, you can draw pictures in there that I steal from Pinterest, of course. And, uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. And now that I'm starting a rewrite, one of the things that I really love about it is I can view the original scene and the rewrite scene side by side. So I can be working on one, reading one, making notes about another. There's the split screen option is the most amazing thing. I have never gotten to the point where I wanted to export it, but I know you can export them in ebook format and it'll automatically do it for you. It's really cool. I, I live and die by, by Scrivener. Um, also, I love to use my iPhone's notes and list tool because it syncs across all my work computer, my personal computer, and my phone. So if I have an idea and I jot it down in notes, I can access it anywhere, anywhere I have internet. So that's been really helpful. And I have read a lot of books about how to write. Um, one thing that I found difficult with that is I'm a rule keeper. So if they say, this is how you do it. Like I went through a couple years where I could hardly write anything because I was so in my head about the rules. So if you read articles on Pinterest or grab a book, I would just caution you that rules can be broken in writing. That's the beauty of creativity. So like, don't overthink that. Um, but those books have definitely been helpful. I think the most helpful one was writing fiction for dummies, to be honest. Like it was fantastic. <laughs> so those are just like the top things that popped into my head, but Scrivener, Scrivener all the way. That is really cool. I mean, personally, I'll take a note of that. So, okay. Valerie, how about for you? 
Well, Julia stole mine. I was definitely going to talk about Scrivener, but it's. I'm so glad you mentioned it, though, because I didn't even know that you could look at the scene side by side. I thought that once you wrote, what I've been doing is I'll export it and edit it in Word doc form. I didn't know that you could look at it side by side. So I will have, have to be doing some tinkering because now I've already learned things. So this is excellent. But um, yeah, so I was definitely going to mention Scrivener. And like, I guess some of the background on like how I got Scrivener is going back to echoing a lot of the things we've already mentioned is that I heard about Scrivener and Scrivener is like the thing that real writers use. And like as a 16 year old, I was like, oh, well, I'm not a real writer. I'm like one of those pretend writers that like self publishes or whatever. Um, but my aunt who edits my books was like looking it up and she was like, I'll get it for you. Cause of course it costs money. And as a 16 year old, I had zero money, <laughs> but she was like, oh, I'll get it for you because you, you know, like you're, you write books and so you're a writer. So therefore you need Scrivener. And so it was, it was so affirming as a teenager, but especially as a writer to feel like she's validating me. She's val and like legitimizing the fact that I'm a writer. It doesn't matter that I'm not Veronica Roth. I can also use Scrivener because it's available. Um, and so I definitely feel like a more professional writer when I'm using Scrivener, but it also is just so, um, it's so helpful to visualize the story. And I am definitely a very visual person. So it is helpful to see like, like, for example, in the book I'm writing right now, the prequel, it's dual perspective, which I've never done before. Um, but I can color mark the scene so that, you know, one, the guy character is one color, the girl character is another. So I can arrange the scene. So that way there's not like three of him in a row and two of her or whatever, and make sure that like, oh, wait, okay, maybe I need a guy scene over here or something to spread it out and make it more even. So just visualizing the story that way has been so helpful with Scrivener. Um, I'm trying to think, I can't really think of any other tools, really. The one thing I've been getting into recently is webinars, um, especially with COVID and stuff. People have been like, oh, well, we can't do an in-person event. And so we're just gonna like, do it online. So now everyone has access to it, which is even better. Um, and so I've watched a couple of those recently. And those are so encouraging to have writers that are like the real writers that have published and sold thousands of copies and tell you their tips and their struggles and kind of their thought process and to glean that information from them, but also feel encouraged to like, oh, I completely relate to that. Like I can relate to that because I am also a writer. So it's a very affirming and encouraging process too. There you go. That's awesome. Really, Joshua, take us away. Any tips or tools? Um, definitely Petros. We definitely I... have Pinterest boards for everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we should get yeah. sponsored by Pinterest at this point. Honestly, this point, this so, point, hey. um, Pinterest, I... if you're listening. Right. Um, honestly, I use Dabble as a writer software instead of Scrivener. And that's mainly just because it's cloud-based instead of software-based. Because I write from like seven different computers at different offices while I'm traveling and doing stuff. And so I like being able to access it from the internet and not being stuck with one computer. Um, but it has a lot of the same features as Scrivener. And if I ever do get to a point where I'm only writing from one computer, I will be to Scrivener. So that's the only reason I use Dabble. But if you need to be um, on the go a lot with your writing, Dabble is a great one. I really enjoy it. Um, but the biggest helpful tool for us is honestly Spotify playlists. Mm -hmm. um, music has a huge, just a huge influence over my writing. Um, it has a, it just has a way of bringing itself to life and bringing a lot of scenes emotionally, whether the songs have lyrics or whether it's just a soundtrack to be listening to while I'm writing. Um, Spotify playlists are really changed the writing game for me because I will spend actually during a lot of my novel prepping, I will commit like several months to building a playlist before I ever start writing. Mm -hmm. And I just consider that part of my writing process because when I am running low on the writing muse or the writing motivation, I listen to that playlist and I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is why I love this story so much. And it's just that, that music, it's, it just speaks to me. So I love it so much. I feel kind of bad because you guys talk about writing out of the writing muse. Yeah. I I can just literally, if I want to write something, I'll go in, think about it, and I'll write it. Yeah. I, I feel really bad about it. When I think about it, it's like, oh, I'm going to go walk this way now. But 
very creative. Mind. Yeah, mind that don't shut up. <laughs> That's um, good. That's a gift. Not all of us are as awesome as Joshua, but yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's a gift. Sometimes it's just like, brain, please shut off. I'm going to sleep. But um, honestly, Spotify, yes. Pinterest, yes. Uh, but biggest for me has been YouTube. It's mostly for the music, to be honest with you, because Spotify sometimes does not have the music that YouTube has. Sometimes there are composers that can't get on Spotify, but they'll go on YouTube and they get some of the best soundtracks that you will ever hear. And it, it really, sometimes that'll be what I need. It's like, okay, how can I make this work? And then I'll put on a soundtrack and I'm like, okay, this is how this will work. This is how this will work. And most of my soundtracks will probably be in the instrumental. Um, sometimes they'll have lyrics, but most of the time they're going to be more, mostly like, you know, powerful lifting and sometimes we'll have action instrumentals though those are really fun to listen to as well so a whole bunch of different tools but mostly for me it's been you know youtube as well yeah very much relay as well um and then speaking of music just two steps from hell anyone thomas Ferguson. yes yes so. all right we're all friends we're on bounders let's go <laughs> very cool um, yeah, so as we close things out, this has been super cool. I, I've definitely um, learned a lot with the programs and whatnot. I'm hoping that those of you listening, uh, this has been helpful as well. Let's go around and uh, let's just give everyone a quick 30 seconds to actually plug where you guys have some of your work, whether it's social media or whatnot. And Laura, we'll start with you again. Um, tell us where we can find you and where we can support your work. Uh, this is a very interesting question. <laughs> I have a writer's account on Instagram. It's called writing underscore moonlight. Um, I am on hiatus from that account. Currently I have not posted in, I don't even know how long it's been a very long time. Um, if you want, you can hop over there, give me a follow. I am honestly, I'm thinking about like revamping my platform, maybe completely starting from scratch just because, um, I think where that account was born from was not a great place. So I'm like, I want to start over, but if you hop over there, follow that account, I will definitely give information where you can follow me in the future. So yes, <laughs> was that 30 seconds? I don't know. <laughs> that was good. And on the podcast side of things, we will definitely be linking all this in the show notes. We will update people if you change your account and all that. So very cool. Jules, how about for you? I do not have any public writing available right now, um, mainly because I haven't completed anything in the last five years that I would be willing to share. <laughs> so, uh, but I am definitely open to connect with people. My Instagram is at Jules underscore Duncan, and I'm definitely happy to to chat about writing, always down for that. Um, hopefully in the future, I will get more professional on that side of things. Which is cool. You can literally support Julia and talk with her with ideas. She is, I can just very much second that, hey, yeah, there's a lot of good ideas. If you want cool story ideas, talk to Julia. So <laughs> uh, Valerie, how about for you? So um, I also have a bookstagram author instagram account called v cottonor author and i it's kind of touch and go um sometimes i'll post once a week or once a month but since i've done school definitely gonna be posting more uh that's the goal but um so i'm on there and all three of my books uh which anyway all three of them are available on amazon two of them keep in mind i did write as a teenager so i definitely write differently now than i did then but all three of them are available on amazon under my name um all very different and fun and then i actually do have a blog which i have not updated in like a year but again will change now that i'm done school called four thousand words on wordpress so all of that will kind of like laura saying it will all be revamped and become more serious with time so awesome well joshua Rayleigh, take us away um, so you can find our book on Amazon, A Queen is Knighted. Um, we are also affiliated with a small uh, press of self-published authors called FayettePress.com. Mm -hmm. So our book is available through there. And then, of course, we have a website, rjsetzer.com. And it's mostly her. We try to get my <laughs> input. It's not me. And our joint Instagram account is at rjsetzer. Yeah, rjsetzer. Rj so you should be able to find us in many different places. We're very present on social media. 
yet. So. Well, guys, thank you so much for being on. This has been a lot of fun just hearing everyone's perspectives and also definitely uh, sharing a lot of the the cool things where it seems like we grew up a lot, on a lot of the classics, which is really cool to hear as well. Um, for those of you listening, um, you again, all the information will be in the show notes below, um, all the resources uh, they mentioned as well as their Instagram and uh, other social media handles. So do check those out. Give them a follow. Definitely support them. And again, thank you guys so much for being on. Very much look forward to seeing all your works out soon, as well as tapping into what you guys have out there already. So, yep. Thank you. For all of you listening to the show, thank you so much for tuning in and following this two-part episode of Unbound Pursuits. As I just mentioned, the handles, the social media, the contact information for all of our writers are in the show notes below. Do check them out. Give them a follow. Support our writers. And I know personally, I'm very looking forward to a lot of the works that will be coming out from these guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I wanted to mention that one of the courses that was talked about in this half of the episode was the signature leadership courses that Unbound offers that are consistently talked about uh, in the podcast and just among the student community as some of the most powerful, impactful courses that students can take. No matter what sort of career field you are going into, no matter what sort of personality you may have as a young adult, leadership is not optional. And that's something that Dr. Jeff Myers from Summit Ministries, who leads this course, really drives home and makes leadership from something that is just for an elite group to something that is uh, absolutely attainable and usable in real life situations for students. So if you want to learn more about our leadership courses, you can find more information about them on our website, beunbound.us. Before you guys go, uh, speaking of the website, I also want to remind you all that both the Navigate class and the Ascend program is open for registration. If you have not heard of Navigate, it is a 16-week online course that teaches students a model for stress-free, God-honoring decision-making. And this is very important for uh, young people of all ages, especially high school and college, as they look to decide where to pursue different careers uh, what interests they should work on. If you're interested in pursuing that even more, there is the Ascend College program that we offer where we help students get on the right path for their future by preparing them for real-world impact through core skills, resume-worthy experience, and a powerful community and a professional network. I highly, highly recommend you guys look into these, especially after listening to our Unbound writers talk a lot about their experiences going through Unbound and how that's equipped them to be ready for the real world. Mm -hmm. All right. And so please join us next week for a very, very special episode. Uh, for one thing, it is going to be a conversation with a guest that we are very, very excited to talk with. We are going to be speaking with David Hazel, who, if you don't know, is the founder of My Father's World, uh, which is one of the biggest resources for homeschool curriculum out there. But in addition, in addition to that, uh, David Hazel has some phenomenal stories about time uh, on the mission field and work in and around missionaries. So make sure to tune in for that episode next week. But for now, we are signing off. And as always, stay unbound. Bound.